and his mercies endures forever. Special good afternoon, oh sorry, good morning. A special good morning to district number one, district number two. We are happy to have you. Now my presentation, I have about 20 minutes and I will be presenting on how to study the Bible. And so today I will just give you seven tips on studying the Bible for more information. I would recommend you to your able pastors, Pastor Hastings and Pastor White. Now as Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. We believe that the Bible is the only rule of faith and practice. We believe that God reveals himself to us through his word, the Bible. Now this belief and high regard for the Bible should drive us to study the word of God regularly. In fact, when a person is baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist church, he or she vows to spend time in regular prayer and Bible study. Now as believers, we should reflect the attitude of the Berean Jews found in Acts chapter 17. Verse 11 says, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. They received, for when they received the message with great eagerness, they went and they examined the scripture every day to see if what Paul said was true. Now as followers of Christ, it is important for us to spend time with God's word because we understand that communication is a foundational component of every relationship. And this includes our relationship with God. If we truly love God, we would naturally be compelled by our relationship to spend time in his word. And we all know that it is important to spend time in God's word, but the problem is actually getting it done. For whatever reason, and one reason I suppose, is that many Christians are intimidated by the Bible. Some see it as a large, mysterious, incomprehensible, and well-coded book, which can only be understood by a few. However, the good news today is that the Bible can be understood by all. Amen. Now, there are seven points that I wish, wish to share with you before I take my seat. And the first point is point number one. Studying the Bible is a spiritual exercise. Now, the Bible being the word of God means that we should be in tune with God to comprehend it. The fact that many persons, scholars, skeptics, and everyone else can read the Bible and come to unbiblical conclusions proves that the Bible is more than an intellectual exercise. It is a spiritual activity. And to understand the Bible, you must be in tune with the Spirit. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14, it says, the person, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Now, when you read the Bible, you are seeking to learn more of God. Amen. And so you must depend on Him to pray, ask Him to open your mind and your heart to understand his word point number two set a time and place now each christian should set aside a time and place to study the bible Amen. now it is like setting a date with god ensure that you have a quiet place where you will not be disturbed and ensure that it is a time when you will not have to rush. Now early mornings, when everyone is sleeping, might be an ideal time for most people. And when studying the Bible, we should never be in a rush. We should have enough time to really spend time in the Word. Ellen White says, 
but there is but little benefit derived from a hasty reading of the scriptures. One may read the whole Bible through and through, yet fail to see its beauty or comprehend its deep and hidden meaning. One passage studied until its significance is clear to the mind and its relation to the plan of salvation is evident, its salvation is evident, is more valuable than the pursual of many chapters with no definitive purpose. Now point number three, and this can be considered a bit controversial to some. Point number three, use modern English translations. Now there are many of us who prefer the language of the King James Version. However, this same language can be a barrier to many persons, especially new believers. And for example, Matthew chapter 19, verse 14 says, But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, some people who are not familiar with the language of the King James Bible, the 18, the 1611 Bible, may have some mixed feelings about this passage. Because after all, why would Jesus command his disciples to suffer little children? If you really think about it, it sounds a bit sacrilegious for us to be suffering children. But when you go to a, a more modern translation, it says, the New King James says, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. The language in these modern translations are clearer and easier to understand. And I understand that for those who are older, and it might not be a good thing to say older, so I'll be a bit euphemistic. Those who are more experienced in life might appreciate and enjoy the register and the sound of the King James English. And that's, that's fine. But the English in which the King James Version is written is not the English that I learned in school. And so for me, it may pose a bit of a challenge, not suggesting that we throw it away altogether. Because my, set, my, my fourth point is this, compare multiple versions. Now the Bible was not originally written in Hebrew or, or, or in English. So what we have are uh, translations are from the original language and no translation is perfect. Therefore, in order to get the best reading and best understanding of the passage, it is good to compare as many translations as possible. And point number five, as I get ready to wrap up, is to invest in a good study Bible. And just this week I made an investment it's the Andrews Study Bible. I got it from the Adventist bookstore. The price, 216 $216. A bit pricey, but I see it as an investment into my spiritual life. And so I, I encourage each and every one of you to make a similar investment. Of course, I got discount. <laughs> Now, the purpose, the purpose of a study Bible is to give you added information about the cultural, historical, syntactical, grammatical, and theological background of a given passage. And I'll explain a bit. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now looking at this passage, I was curious to know what the expression, the word means. And so I went in my Andrews study Bible and I found that the word 
the, the expression, the word, comes from a Greek word name called logos. And it was used in Greek philosophy to, de to denote a divine mediator. I also learned that John is the only Bible writer who uses this expression to describe Jesus. And the purpose for doing this was to appeal to the Greeks at the time, the Greek readers at the time. And all that I got just from looking into my Andrew study Bible. Sometimes, you know, when a pastor comes to preach and you say, wow, that pastor sounds so intelligent. He must be well read. It could be that he has a good study Bible and he just looked at the reference and put it right there in the sermon. Point number six. Point number six. Study each passage in its given... Uh, Pastor Hayson, I apologize. <laughs> I gave away the trade secret. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> study, point number six. Study each passage in its given context. Study each passage in its given context. There are no isolated verses in the script in, in the Bible. Each verse is connected to a chapter, and each chapter is connected to a book, and each book is connected to the other books found in the Bible. And so, the Bible agrees with itself. Wow. So when you come across a difficult passage, look at the context in which it is written. Look at the rest of the chapter, look at the rest of the book, and look at what the Bible has to say in other places about the similar topic. An example of this, very popular, Acts chapter 10, verse 15. Acts chapter 10, verse 13 to 15, it says, and I'll read quickly as I wrap up. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spake to him again a second time, What God cleansed, you must not call common or unclean. Now, an uncritical reading of this passage may seem to suggest that all foods are clean. But when you look at the wider context, we discover, we would discover that the writer here is not addressing the topic of diet. Rather, the passage is describing the issue of prejudice. Peter, being a Jew, saw the Gentiles as unclean people, and so he was reluctant to share the gospel with them. And so this passage does not end by Peter going to a restaurant and getting some pork chops. It ends with Peter going to Cornelius, the Gentile, to preach the gospel, and that's why it is important uh, to study in the, in the given context. And point number last, <laughs> study to learn more of God and not to argue Amen. with anyone. Amen. Study to learn more of God and not to argue with anyone. When I was young, I heard a story when I was younger, I heard a story which was adapted from a nursery rhyme. I think it was written in 1805. And it was about the pussycat who went to London. And the version I heard, that the pussycat went to the Buckingham Palace. And when this pussycat came back to the hood, they asked him what did he see. I realize that it is different from the original nursery rhyme. But they asked him what did he see. And the pussycat said he saw a mouth. Now one would expect with all the grandeur of the Buckingham Palace, he would speak about the gold or the ornaments or, or whatever else, the furniture. But all he saw was a mouse. And the point is 
you look for you, you you will find or you will find what you are looking for when we are studying the bible it is not to go to our neighbor to argue or to prove a point we are studying to learn more of god and finally as i close many of us have become too busy for god for some reason one elder said to me that we have allowed our blessing to become our curse and so with all the jobs and the vehicles and all the activities and meetings we tend to put God at the back burner now today I want to encourage each and every one of you and even those who were baptized last week and those who are to be baptized today I want to encourage you to make a concerted effort to spend time in the word of God. May God continue to bless you as we continue to learn more of him.